a small advance against my fee. Mm -hmm. You think there's going to be need for my services directly? You're deaf as well as dumb. She said no. Listen, you care to dance? Music, Professor. <laughs> Fight, gentlemen, I believe they evenly match now. Attention! All these been canceled. Get your horses, farm up out front on the double. Have these men sobered up and ready to ride. It'll take a miracle. Both dead. She did it. Not exactly right, Captain. Mallory, isn't it? That's right. There was a fight. Yes, over her. She started to taunt them into it. She's always making trouble with the soldiers. They're lying! You must have seen it. What happened? I was paying attention to my own business. And uh, so were these gentlemen. Sergeant, send a man for the marshal. The marshal's out on posse. That's right, Captain Mallory. Sergeant, write down these names. You, what are you called? Josiah Boone, MD. Mm hmm. A credit to your profession, no doubt. You? Well, you do have a name, don't you? We call it Dallas, sir. Huh. And I, sir, am called Hatfield. You can find me here any time, Captain. I'll be pleased to wait your pleasure. Uh, maybe you think the Army can't touch you because you're civilians. Well, bartender, here's a message you can pass on to your fellow merchants. You get rid of your undesirable elements. Or I'll get rid of them for you. Requisition the wagon. Yes, sir. Get those bodies back to the fort. Yes, sir. Jerry. Jerry, you're not going to let him do this. You heard him, Dallas. You too, Doc. Hmm. You see, my dear, you and I are both victims of a disease called social prejudice. Makes no allowance for beauty, wit, or previous service. Doc, I'm scared. You think he's going to lock us up? <laughs> Who can cage the birds that have flown? Stage will be here in the morning, honey. Oh, hi, Buck. Hi, boys. How are things at the junk? Oh, fair to Midland. Have a good trip. Not a bad one. Ain't got a lot to payroll. Shoot, I ain't looked. That much money makes a poor man like me dizzy. Boys, get these horses changed quick as you can. I want to get on the road. Ma'am, you might just as well get out and stretch your legs, too. I mean your limbs. We're changing horses here. Is there any place where I might get a cup of tea? You ain't feeling poorly, are you? No, thank you. I'll be all right. Well, ma'am, I don't know about a cup of tea, but they'd probably serve you a cup of coffee over yonder at the hotel. Thank you. Uh, pardon me, brother. Am I correct in assuming that's a liquor emporium? Well, ma'am, I don't know what they've done to it recently, but I always figured it's a saloon. Thank you, brother. Hey, wait a minute. You ain't going in yonder to do no preaching or anything like that, are you? Why, they'd shoot you plumb full of holes, parson. Thank you, brother. But I'm not a parson. I'm a liquor salesman.
there, madam. Within this trunk are all the treasured mementos of my lost youth. Oh, don't dare, madam, me, you drunken old deadbeat, you. This trunk stays right here till I get the three months' rent show. Oh, but madam... That's not a word from you. Merciless old harridan. Oh, buck, old boy, I was about to seek you out. Trouble, Doc? With one so fair. Ah, <laughs> uh, is this not the face that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of Ilium? Farewell, farewell, fair Helen. Whoopsie. No, you don't. No, you don't. Ah, <laughs> she's too quick for me. <laughs> You're looking for me, Doc. Ah, uh, yes, Buck. It seems that my reputation as a medical practitioner in this community has become suspect lately. I seek fresher field. Carry me to Cheyenne, Buck. Now, Doc, you know the company policy. Cash on the barrel. Well, have I not always served your company faithfully without reward? Who cured old Nellie of the heaves when nobody else could get her out of the barn? Who did that? Yeah, I gotta admit you did, Doc. That old mare's the best dang wheeler in the outfit. A gallant steed, indeed. A personal loan, a debt of honor, Buck. Well, I please, don't know, please, Doc. Please, please. All right, just this once. Every sick and ailing person in Cheyenne will be grateful. <laughs> hey, Curly. Didn't wake you up, did it, Curly? You ain't ailing, are you? No. I rode all night. Where's Robbie? He's supposed to ride shotgun for me to Cheyenne. Oh, he's out looking for gold. Riding around in circles with the rest of Chuckleheads on that posse. Posse? Yeah. Ringo kid busted out of the jail. And the governor's put up $500 reward for the man that can find him. Not that anybody's going to. Bust it out. Shoot, there ain't nobody ever done that before. Ringo did. But now he's probably hightailing it for Kansas after Luke Plummer. Well, I sure hope so. Thought you liked the kid. If he catches up with the Plummers, they'll kill him. <laughs> That's a dead mortal cinch. That old Luke Plummer's the orneriest old devil that God ever let live. Well, on my last trip, I seen him knock some poor rancher down and just stomp a mud hole in him with his boot heel. Last trip where? Where? Now, where'd I ever go but Cheyenne to dead wouldn't buy? You seen Luke Plummer and Cheyenne? Yeah, him and Matt and Ike Plummer, too. Boy, there's a couple of chips off the old block holding that poor rancher down so their old Buck, man shut up and listen. Now, the Plummers took their herd to Abilene. Yeah, but they're back already. Why did you suppose I was hoping that the kid had headed for Kansas? Hand me them boots. Well, now, look, I got to get out of here. Who am I going to get to ride shotgun? Me. You? Now, what the Buck, hell are you... shut up and give me the other boot. Curly, you ain't got the sense of God give a goose. Stop your humming, Henry. Two thousand. Four. Six. Eight. Turn all the way down. Ten thousand. You're humming again, Henry. Sorry, Father Hayes. Here's your receipt, Clem. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Good day, sir. Ten thousand dollars. Did you hear that, Henry? Ten thousand dollars. Yes, ten thousand dollars. Put it in the safe. Yes. Henry, what's the matter? Are you nervous? Well, perhaps handling this much money all at once makes me a bit uh, apprehensive. Yes, sir. That was a very smart idea of mine, convincing those mine owners to deposit their payroll checks a couple of months in advance. Oh, yes, I agree, sir. Very, very smart. Yes, sir. Money in circulation, that is the lifeblood of progress in the backbone industry. Ah, everything locked up tight, Henry. Yes, indeed, sir. Snug as a bug in a rug. Now, who in heaven's name could that be? They know this bank is closed until Monday. Well, I'm certainly glad I came, Henry. You're not getting on that stage for Cheyenne. What do you mean? Dallas is on that stage. Dallas? Yes. Well, who's he? Not he, Henry. She. That dance hall creature that the killing was over. Oh. Eloise, Henry has got to take that stage. He's going to Denver to arrange for the bank merger. Well, now, just one moment, Father. Now, if a thing like this is going to give my little darling even one moment of worry, I am prepared to forego this journey. Oh, Henry, dear, I trust you. I just can't bear the thought of you talking to a creature like that. Talking? Why, Eloise Gayford, I'm surprised at you. I wouldn't even glance in the direction of a creature like that. Now, come on, or you'll miss that stage. Oh, Father Haynes, I'll, I'll take this, if you don't mind. It may be just the least bit heavy. I had, I had, oh, yes. Uh, oh, ma'am. Uh, 
outside here, please. And if you ever go east further, come out to my house for dinner. Nobody in St. Louis sets a better table than my dear, lovely wife. Just been performing my morning ablutions, Jerry. That's really the only useful purpose for our poor. Huh? That's water to you. <coughs> I'm just wondering, my dear fellow. I know I haven't been of much economic value to you in the past, but maybe just a little jot to the One talk. road. Talk was money. You'd be the best customer I ever had. Uh, you're a ministering angel, Jerry. Sure, Doctor. Have a good trip. Will you be traveling with us on the stagecoach, Doctor? I shall indeed. Your health, Reverend? My name is Peacock, brother. I'm not a minister. He's a whiskey drummer. How do you do, Mr. Haycock? Uh, Peacock. Of course, Peacock. Peacock, an old and honored day. Now, what have we here? What do we got here? Oh, nose drops, huh? Oh, would you allow me, sir? Oh, thank you, Doctor. Just lean back gently. Open your mouth, close your eyes, and say, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. Why, Doctor? It opens the throat passage, you see. Now, lean back. Once more, say, la, 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 la. La, la, la. La, 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 la. La 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 la. Yeah, a little wider. La 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 la. That's fine. A little wider. La 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 la. All aboard, folks! Stage to shine. All aboard. La la la. Little louder. La 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 la. Little wider. La la la. Better, huh? I thought so. It's a good thing for you in your condition that I happened along. What is my condition, Doctor? Well, that's right. That's right. Don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Petcock. I'll be constantly at your elbow. Bless you. Uh, doctor, you have my case. Uh, I have yours. How could that have happened? Oh, pardon me, gentlemen. Eh? Oh, Mr. Gatewood, I'll put your bag Oh, up. thank you. No, it uh, has some papers in it that I must study. Thank you. Oh. Oh, Dallas? Yeah, put that on top. Bye-bye, dearie. Take care now. You go see the Turk when you get to Cheyenne, honey. He'll find something for you. Thanks. This way, Mr. Petlock. Uh, Peacock. Yes, of course, of course. Easy, Doc. <sighs> Colonel asks if you deliver this dispatch to Captain Mallory in Cheyenne as soon as you get there. Yeah, sure. We'll be going along with you as far as the overnight station at Shoshone. There's a patrol there. Take as far as Horseshoe Bend. Well, why all this? What's the trouble? Just rumors so far. One of our patrols is overdue. Telegraph's been cut. Before the wire went dead, we had a report about a Sioux war party led by Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse? I ain't gonna sit down. Now, Curly, shut up. Well, of course, the Army has no authority over you gentlemen if you think it's unsafe to make the trip. This stage is going to Cheyenne, Lieutenant. Now, you and your soldier boys can ride along or not, as you please. Now, Curly, you I ain't gonna go... All right, you folks all heard. Anybody don't want to make this trip, better get out now. Oop! Courage, Mr. Seeker, courage. Uh, Marshal, I'd like to state that I have complete confidence in the United States Army. As do I, sir. Captain Mallory is my husband. Yes, ma'am, I figured that. I know the captain's been looking forward to you getting there. Dallas? Dallas? I'll take Indians. As long as they keep me out of the hands of the Army. You, Reverend? Well, you see, brother, I have a wife and eight children. Bravo! Then you are a man. Lead on, Curly. Marshal, I believe you have room for one more. I'm offering my protection to this lady. Mr. Hatfield, if I'm the need arises, I can shoot fairly straight. Yes, you've proven that too many times. Your servant, ma'am. Certainly a fine-looking group of soldier boys back there. Somehow I, I get a tremendous feeling of pride in my country when I see the type of young man who serves in the army. Of course, none more worthy of praise than your fine husband, Mrs. Mallory. Thank you. It was my good fortune and pleasure to uh, become acquainted with Captain Mallory when he banked with us at Dry Fork. Do I understand that you're going to uh, join him in Cheyenne? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Have 
Have you met my husband, Mr. Hatfield? Only briefly. <laughs> Long enough to convince some of us to make this journey. <laughs> Tally ho. It's nothing for you to concern yourself about, Mrs. Mallory. The man is drunk. Not yet. <laughs> no harm, that man. To a swift and joyful reunion with your beloved husband. Stop. Whoa, They'll whoa, catch up. Just keep them horses moving. Hey, we! Head are moving now. Trouble with you, Curly. You ain't got the slightest idea of the things that can happen on a run like this. Put your loaf in there, Queenie. Hit up there, Sam. Or you can axle on the stage like as not. Bunch of murdering Indians. Just Nobody's away. seen any Indians. But you heard what the lieutenant said. That shaved tail said rumors. Ain't nobody ever gotten scalped by an old rumor. Hi, Curly. Hey, Buck. Howdy, kid. How's the family? Oh, fine. Just fine. Shut up. Figured you'd still be out with one of them posses, Marshal. How come you're riding shotgun? How come you ain't in Abilene by now? Because Luke Plummer's in Cheyenne. Been there by now if my horse hadn't gone lame. Well, you got room for another passenger, Buck? Well, I... I'll I... take that Winchester. Huh? Your Winchester. Oh. Well, uh, you might need me in this Winchester, Curly. I saw a couple of ranches burning last night. I guess I haven't made it clear, kid. You're under arrest. Nobody's arguing that, Curly. Don't do nothing foolish, kid. Trouble, Marshal. No trouble. Just picking up another passenger. Thanks. Don't mention it, Marshal. Exciting. You're really the famous Ringo kid? <laughs> My friends just call me Ringo. It's a nickname I had as a kid. Well, then, we'll just call you Ringo, too. Seems to me I knew your family. Didn't I set your arm once when you was a little shaper about that how you fell off a horse or something? I think it was Christmas Eve. I've been having a deal with the boys when your, your folks sent for me. Doug Boone. Indeed I am. Let's have a drink on it. Oh, please, now, Doctor. Now you can ill afford to be selfish in your condition. What is my condition? Oh, you're going to need a lot of attention. A lot of attention. A little tardy now and then a small enough payment for my valuable professional services. I think it was just after I'd been discharged from the Union Army, shortly after the War of the Rebellion. You mean the war against the Southern Confederacy? I mean nothing of the kind. It was my kid brother broke his arm, Doc. You did a good job. Thank you, sir. Special compliments are always welcome. Tell me, whatever happened to the boy whose arm I fixed? He was murdered along with my dad. with me you just fell into more money than you ever hoped to see in your whole mortal life the kids daddy and me was friends yeah everybody knows that nobody knows what a man has to do for his forty dollars a month once he puts on one of these damn things well i'm getting too old to hire out for wages i never could keep from drawing to an inside straight so that five hundred dollar reward's gonna come in mighty handy 
$500, a fella can get himself a small ranch. Start building a herd. Uh-huh. That's a mighty lonesome way to live, though. That cigar. Right. You're annoying the lady. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm, I'm so fond of the weed myself, I sometimes forget it. <laughs> Not pleasant to others, excuse me. You're a gentleman. You'd know better than ever smoke in the presence of a lady. <laughs> you know, last week I took a bullet out of a fellow who'd been shot by a gentleman. The bullet was in the back. You were send your way to easy, mister. Please. That's wonderful. Just wonderful. I have eight of my own, you know. Is this going to be your first? Yes. That's why I'm so anxious to be with my husband. night for Horseshoe Bend. Well, well. Guess we'll just have to turn around and head back. Well, now, just one moment, please. I was told that this stage is going to Cheyenne. Now, you've got to take us there. Glad to meet Mr. Gatewood. Doctor? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Up you go. Thank you. No, no, wait. Just... Oh, no, no. Pardon me. Sasha, that lady is with child. This is Valerie. Hey, the bar open, Millie? Part of a bottle left, I think. Help yourself, Doc. Fine. Doc? I know, yes, I want to look into that. Come along, Mr. Babcock. Peacock. Yeah, Peacock. Marshal. Yes. <laughs> With the uh, lieutenant and all of these fine men as our escort, there's no reason uh, for these people to be alarmed. Sorry, we... sir. My orders are to deliver you here and then return. Lieutenant, that, that was before we had a clear picture of the situation. Now, anyone can see that it's out of the question. If, uh... Those what... are my orders, sir. Lieutenant, I'm sure you'll understand, ma'am. Lieutenant, in my opinion, you're making a grave mistake. I'd hate to see a promising young officer like yourself cited for dereliction of duty. Well, that's a chance I'm just going to have to take, sir. Well, now that we got that settled, I reckon we can get some fresh horses and head on back with the lieutenant. Shirley? Hmm? I think we can get through all right on our own, don't you? Now, don't you go ahead and him on, kid. I'm a driving this outfit, and when them soldiers go back, I'm a going with them. Billy? I know our district yeah, manager's going to be I, I, mighty I, I, pleased when I tell him how fast you got me that change of horses. I'll take care of it. Lieutenant, me and my family have got most of our belongings loaded. We'll go back with you, if it's all right. Of course. Well, it's seen as some of you want to go on and some of you want to turn back. Well, any uh, fair blame fool would know that the only safe wait, thing wait, we're not to afraid. turn around and head back. We're not afraid. Right. We our money to go to Cheyenne. All right. Don't yell it. Guess the only fair way to settle this thing is we go inside and take a vote. These passengers is my responsibility. Anyhow, I didn't hire out to serve as no target. Mrs. Mallory. Inside, kid. Ma'am. You know, Curly, I'm just about 30 some odd miles from Cheyenne. We may not get there. Depends on how they vote. I already voted in prison. Mm -hmm. It sure smells good, Miss Pickett. Are you sure you got enough? I think so. Marshal, since you've taken the responsibility of riding shotgun, let me point out that it is your duty to see to it that that stage makes it to Cheyenne. Thanks for your advice, Kate Wood. Thanks, Doug. But I'd like to hear from the lady first. 
forgiven. Ma'am? My husband's in Horseshoe Bend, Marshal. No, that's one for going on. What's your vote have to? Oh, there, Curly. Aren't you forgetting your manners? There's another lady here. Oh, yeah. Well, um, what do you say, Dallas? Does it matter? Gatewood. Cheyenne. How about it, Happy? I'll go with the lady. All right, that's uh, three for going on. Doc? I, sir, by training and experience, am a fatalist. Somewhere, sometime, there might be the right bullet or the wrong bottle for Josiah Boone. Yes or no. And no. having achieved this philosophical detachment, I have caught in danger. I have flaunted it. During the late war, when I had the honor to serve our great president, Abraham Lincoln, you, in the midst of shot and shell... When do the you battle, want to turn back? No. I want another drink. Curly, I got an idea. Right. Well, what's your vote, Reverend? Oh, I would like to go on, brother. I want to reach the bosom of my dear family in St. Louis as quickly as possible. All right. But you realize I may never reach that bosom if we go on. Well, what I mean is that under the circumstances, I will go back with the bosom. I'd be the soldiers. Now, Mr. Adcock, just a minute here. Surely you're not going to go back in your condition. Well, what is my condition? Oh, riding all that way in an open wagon in the biting wind. If you insist on going back, I take myself off the case. I won't be responsible. Oh, please, I'm going out with my doctor, Marshal. You think it's time for my drops? Oh, yes, mine too. Bring back, close your eyes. Say la 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 what about me? Now, see here, why, why do you... I can speak for myself, thank you. Ain't I got no choice? No. Not no more than I have. Now, the kid there. Curly, nothing's gonna keep me out of Cheyenne. Kid, you're gonna go where I go. Now, here's how I got it figured. Instead of staying here overnight like we're supposed to, we'll just push right on as soon as we get them horses changed. Ain't but a couple of hours until dark, and by then we... By then we'll all be dead. Why the Indians will be watching the road when they see us without no we soldiers? We ain't gonna be on the road, Buck. We're taking the old trail over Laramie Ridge. At night? Yeah. Why, a Billy Goat couldn't get across Laramie Ridge after dark. Buck, you sure do worry a lot. Now, look here, kid. Now I don't need you to go... break, we ought to be in Horseshoe Bend. From la, there on, we'll have the soldiers and fix the rest la, of the way. Now, oh, clear as a bell. You folks just relax now and go ahead and eat your grub. Uh, you too, Reverend. Buck, Buck. Oh, yes. come on, give me a hand with them horses. My life, I just hate the cake. You got yourself scratched up a bit. A little. Getting out? Staying in. Yeah. Would you care for some salt, Mrs. Mallory? No, thank you. Here you are, ma'am. Want to sit down? No, thank you. I'd rather be over here. I'll take this before it gets cold. Did you see that? That, that convict stole my food. Uh, pass the bread. Mind if I sit here? Suit yourself. Thank you, ma'am. It's been quite some time since I sat down to eat with a lady. I appreciate it. You trying to be funny with a smart jackass crack? No, ma'am. Sure didn't mean no offense. I guess it ain't easy breaking out of the pen and into polite society all at once. Well, you ain't made it yet. There's uh, no lady here so you can uh, stop all that ma'am hogwash. I'll get the sugar. I'll have a better drive work. 
Not many times. You remember the Oriental Saloon? <laughs> sure do. Well, I was one of the girls. I'd best get the sugar you coffee you get cold. Look, I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to sit here with me. And I'm trying to tell you how obliged I'd be if you'd let me. Is there something else I could get you instead, Mrs. Mallory? No, thank you. I'm just not very hungry. Uh, perhaps you'd like to step outside for a breath of fresh air? Yes, please. time and place for me. Are you from Virginia? Yes, ma'am. Have we met before? I served in your father's regiment. Really? Well, I don't seem to recall any, have you? This coat of arms, it's Ashbourne Manor. I wouldn't know, Mrs. Mallory. I won the cup in the wager. Be a while before you see any more apple pie. Where well, they'll put you. Maybe. But first I'll finish what I broke out to do. You think Curly's gonna let you? He never takes his eyes off you. He'll blink. What'd you do to make him put you in there? They say I killed a man. Shot him in the back. Did you? That's what they say. Hey, well, we got the horses changed. I'm gonna grab some grub. No, you ain't got time. Well, let's go, folks. Let's get a load up. Mr. Hancock. Kid. Yes, sir. Come on. Better hurry, Dallas. Bud? Yeah? You ever hear how Ringo came to shoot that man in the back? I was at the trial. Heard Luke Plummer say that's what the kid done. Then it ain't true? Hell, Plummer wound up with all the kids' families, land, and cattle. I'd have been on that jury, it'd been Luke Plummer that was a standing trial. Bud, get on out here. Yeah, yeah. Soon. Yeah. Soon. Up we go. Mr. Hey, what? Can I put your bag on top? Oh, no, I'll keep it with me right into uh, Cheyenne. Thank you. and you still ain't making any sense. All right, here's something that makes sense. If we ever get to Cheyenne, which I doubt, I just let them shoot it out amongst themselves. Let who? Who? Luke Plummer and the kid. Who do you suppose? Oh, Luke could kill the kid in a gunfight. You know that. I ain't so sure about that. Well, even if Ringo got lucky and left that old buzzard belly side up, there'd still be the Suns. You know damn well to be three against one. No, the only safe place for the kid right now is back in the pen. Oh, 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 oh,
there. I told you we couldn't cross this ridge after dark. I said it, but oh no, you always know everything. Shut up, Buck. <laughs> You men to help out here, all of you. There we go, Reverend. Once more into the breach, shoulders to the wheel. Oh, yes. You're oh, all right now. Don't worry about a oh. thing. Just come along. All right. Oh. I'm with you. Oh. Here we Be go. Careful, You coming, Haywood? Gatewood. Yeah. Oh, Gatewood. yes, indeed. We've Come all on. got to do our part to help. This stage has got to get through. Uh, Mrs. Mallory, uh, here, uh, wouldn't you be more comfortable with your feet up? We may be here quite a while. Thank you. I admire your courtesy, Gatewood. Oh, please, please don't mention it. Thank you. Well, well, well. Here we are waiting to fall off a mountain if the Indians don't get us first. And both of us owing it to the same man. Big, black-haired, brown-eyed wonder of a Captain Mallory. Funny, ain't it? You don't know my husband. You couldn't. Ooh, I wish you were right. He invited you to leave the old plantation. And he invited me to get my bustle out of town, along with poor old Doc out there. Jim wouldn't do a thing like that. Honey, you may sleep with him, but you sure don't know him. close by, boy. Sure, Curly. Sure. Wouldn't have it no other way till we get to Cheyenne. There's a sharp curve up ahead, and it gets kind of steep and narrow, too. But I figure we can make it. Make it? Kid, you're out of your oh, damn shut up, Buck. Now, it'll take both of you up there. One on the brake and one on the line. If anybody wants these dead lane lines, they can crawl up and get them. I ain't going to drive this team You won't have to, Buck. I'll be up front leading them for you. Now, what do you think, Curly? Yeah. Gentlemen, I think if you don't mind, I'll just get my traveling bag and follow along on foot. Uh, perhaps we all should walk. All of us can. There ain't nobody walking. Oh, you mean Mrs. Bowie? Well, that's right, sir. I'll I want all of you aboard and crowded over on the inside as far as you can. We're gonna need every ounce of weight to keep this thing on the trail. Oh, now, just one moment. That's not fair. I mean, this should be an individual choice. All we need is your weight, Gatewood, alive or dead. Mr. Gatewood. Gatewood. We're gonna do what's best for most. Now you get in. All right, move over, Buck. There we go. Up. Steady, ah! Buck. No, I ain't. What's more, I ain't about to be. Lead out, kid. Get out, ah! Billy. Jeez, get out. Of there. Come on, there, kid. Get out. Get out. Whoa! 
Ringo! Are you all right? You look like you were really worried, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> Five, six, eight, maybe more. It's hard to tell. Mrs. Mallory, don't go in there. My husband may be in there. And if they're all as bad as that, then I'm the only one who could recognize him. Please, ma'am. I must. Marsha. Ma'am? Captain Mallory is not among those men. Oh, that's wonderful, Mrs. Mallory. Well, we can get going then, Marsha. Hmm? Not before my husband's men are given a decent burial. Mrs. Mallory, you're a good and noble woman, but at a time like this, you should think of, 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 of yourself and then us, all of us. Think of the living. Mr. Gatewood, oh, Mrs. Mallory, I this insist. is a prerogative. I, I insist. Doc. Doc. Ringo, get the doctor. Hey, Doc. Doc, we need you over there. The lady's sick. Thank you, Reverend. All we need is a time like this. A sick woman on our hands. I think I feel a little sick myself. Do you think it's her time, Doctor? Doctor? What's the matter? Don't you know what those things are? I ain't even sure that the doc won't bring that baby in his little black bag. <laughs> you have to make a circus out of this way. You cheat. No, no, what? no, no, let him say it. Field. Go ahead, Tim, let will say it. What's going on? Just nerves, Marshal. Mr. Hatfield, I know it's hard, but you must try to calm yourself, sir. Well, how is she? Did you make some coffee? Well, I found something on the stove here. It looks more like coal oil. It'll be even better. Some salt. Salt? Uh-huh. A lot of salt. Oh, I'll get a lot. I think you better go in there with her, Alice. Me? Yeah, she's awake. She's frightened. I think it's better that she's not left alone. Well, 
that her fancy man over there hold her hand, or the reverend. I ain't nobody's nursemaid. She needs a woman. Not any woman. She don't want me, Doc. Come on, now, quit tearing at yourself and do like the Doc says. Come on. It's even when you're a lady, huh? Go ahead and scream. That's what I do. Scream. No, don't be afraid. That's good. That means it started. Boom. Doc, that's four. Now you're gonna bust. Oh, I'm all. Assault worker. Assault worker. <laughs> Water. Now. Whiskey. Dog. Friend, if you just open up your little treasure chest there. Boone, you take a drink and I'll kill you. No. If he needs it. I need it. Bourbon will ride. Doesn't matter. Just take the cork out of the bottle. Now pour it over my hands. Go ahead. It's a sterilization, the device we army surgeons found very useful in the field. So you could cool down, my rebel friend, a little more. Mm, the elixir of life. One of you gentlemen just open the door, please. Yes, sir. It's unheard of. Twelve hours. Twelve full hours. Sometimes it takes longer. My third daughter. No, my, my second. I'm talking of time lost. You silly little man. I've been meaning to tell I you. I suggest ever... you both keep quiet before I lose my temper. Well, I'm going to take the watch for a while and let Buck come on back in here. Let's go, kid. I want you with me. <laughs> you stay here. What is it? What happened? What happened? Waldo, Waldo Koo, he runs his stage station. Hello, kid. How you like my new wife? Fine. But, but, but she's a savage. Of course. Full blood is Sue. Good business. Sue Trader have two wife. Chief of Crazy Horses people. Yeah. Well, Waldo, that's what I want to talk to you about. How come you were gone at just the right time? Um, me say no stage come. Lee squad soldier here. We go along with Captain to sign in to buy supply. And you, you didn't have any trouble getting back here. Oh, no. See nobody. Come on, honey. We go kitchen. Pardon me, gentlemen. Say, that's wonderful. Did you hear what he said? He didn't see anybody. The way's clear. We can hitch up the horses and, uh... And what? Are you suggesting we leave Mrs. Mallory behind? Hmm? That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, she, she has the, the doctor with her. And, uh, you can stay, too, if you like. That, that way she'll be safe. Well, I thought it was a good idea he had. I don't know. We took a boat. We took a boat to go to Cheyenne, right? Together. There was nothing about together. Anyway, this will be better and safer. We'll get through and then, uh, well, we'll send back soldiers to protect you. And I'll be doggone. I'll be doggone. Then uh, let's uh, take a look. I'll be doggone. It's a little girl. Well, I'll be. Look at it. Thank you. That's my condition. How is Mrs. Mallory? She's going to be all right. That lady's tougher than you think. I, uh, well, Dallas. You 
Doors open, boys. Drinks on the uh, back. I'm going to drink to the good dog. Okay. Okay. And so will I. Kettle, I'll join you, Jimmy. Right back at you, Johnny. Please. Kettle, please. Hey, fella. please. Ah. Three cheers for Doc. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. Hey, uh, perhaps you don't understand. I, I need a horse very badly. I said very sorry. You can name your own price. I, I'm willing to offer $25. I tell you, no can do. $50. $50. I don't care what kind of a horse it is. Any old horse, a pack horse will do. All right, $100. That's my final offer. Oh, are you listening? I'm offering you $100. $100 for a horse. No sell. No sell. Ain't you even planning to say goodbye before you go in? Forgot your hat. Dallas, honey. Thank you. Dallas, this is what I call real luck. Ever since the stage pulled out of Drive Fork, I've been trying to find some way to get you alone for a minute. Hmm, looks like we almost missed each other. I was coming in in just a minute to look for you. Sure. It's been a long time, huh? Where are you going? Where are you going, Emmy? To Cheyenne. And I've got to make it there as fast as I can. It's important, believe me. Why, well, you? And that's exactly what the marshal should know. That you were stealing one of the coach horses to get there. Dallas, you wouldn't tell the marshal. Why would you do a thing like that? You've always kept our little secret so well. Help me keep this one. Cheyenne's only the first stop. Denver. In Denver, I've got the biggest business deal you ever heard of. That's why I was coming in just now to get you and take you with me to Denver. But then you'd have to steal two horses. What's the difference? One or two? Dallas, honey, just imagine yourself in a big city, living in fine hotels. Nobody'd know you. You'd be a queen, wearing beautiful clothes, beautiful jewels, all those things I'd get you when my big deal goes through. You'd, you'd like that, wouldn't you, darling? Yeah. Except there's only one thing wrong, Henry. Yeah, what's that? You'd be there. Oh, I see. You'd prefer to wind up in Cheyenne with some drunken, sweat stinking. No. I didn't mean that. I was just joking. Please, I didn't mean it. Forgive me. You have any idea what they'd do to me if they found out? Yeah. Kill you. Dallas? Mm. He's bothering you? Customer's always right. Nothing changes. Oh, yes, it does. If you really wanted to. Preaching? Oh. Just a little friendly advice, huh? That's right. From you? Why not? Because you should be taking advice, not giving it. Well, I make out. <laughs> sure. Sure, you, uh, you get real lucky, you'll wind up face down on the dirt with Luke Plummer's bullets in your head. Then they won't have to lock you up in it and finish that job on your back. Why'd they do that to you? Oh, a strange kind of fellow around the prison. Every Saturday night, he got drunk and kind of took it out on me. But he won't be doing that anymore. Why, are you going to plead with him? No, I won't have to. Before I left, I broke both his arms. Now, what are you doing about your scars? You got them, you know, even if they don't show. I'll tell you what you're doing. Nothing! Shut up. You took a whipping in Dry Fork, and now you're crawling to Cheyenne for Shut another. Shut up! When are you going to stand up and stop crawling? Shut up! Tell me what. 
And after watching how you did for that lady and her baby, I thought you were changed. And I liked you for it. That's what I came out here to tell you. I liked you. Ringo! Ringo! What are you doing out here? Oh, Dallas. Look, I think both of you better get back inside. Chow's on anyway. All right, let's move, kid. Come on. Now, I told you to stay close by. How can I thank you? No need to. Mrs. Mallory? Hmm? I really never knew your husband. Well, you're looking pretty chipper this morning. Didn't expect to see you up so early, Dallas. She hasn't slept all night. Oh, I slept in the chair a lot. <laughs> Bet you did. Well, how you feeling? Fine, just a little tired. Dallas, you think you could rustle her up a little warm bra? I tried to get her to take some earlier. Oh, here now, you have to eat, my dear. Have to get your strength back so we can deliver Captain Mallory's new family. All right, in a little while. I'll, um, try and get this heated up. Like I said, I never knew him. What's the matter, Alice? Nothing. Nothing. It's a beautiful baby. Let me tell you something, my dear. Every new one, no matter whose, is the most wonderful. See if you can get Ringo to come back to the kitchen. Well, they're both doing just about as well as can be expected. <laughs> I must say, she's a real soldier's wife, that little lady. Oh, Thank that's you. wonderful news, Doctor. We, we can get started now, Marshal. Well, I'm not sure there, so if you want my professional opinion. But, but you, you said they were doing well. Well, lying in bed, being waited on hand and foot's not the same thing as bouncing around the mountains in a stagecoach. She needs a little time to regain her strength. This is the most demented conversation I've ever listened to. We're risking our lives staying here. We've got to hitch up and go. Nobody's doing anything to endanger that lady or child. Danger? Have you forgotten what this place was like when we drove up? Now, those were armed cavalrymen. All right, all right. This ain't getting us anywhere. Let's just quiet down and talk sensibly. Girlie's right. Say, uh, you don't need the kid here for this confab, do you? He does what I tell him to. Why don't you go out and see if you can get some fresh coffee going? Well, go ahead. I go, Joe. You stay. I still got a couple of questions for you. Now, let's just sit here and argue this thing out right. We've got to go ahead. I don't know. You may be right. Um, Doc sent me in to make some coffee, but I see you're already doing it. I asked him to. I moved your saddle from the, from the coach to the shed. Wall those pack horses tied up in the corral. Here's your rifle. When did you do all this? Thinking what you said last night kept me awake. I had plenty of time. Take it. What are you waiting for? Well, what about you? You're going to clear the slate if you shoot three men. Girl like me, you know how many men I'd have to shoot. What chance do I have? Well, it depends. On what? On a lot of things. 
If you had the right man's arm to lean on, the slate would be clean. You think there is such a man? Could be. You? As soon as I finish what I've got to do in Cheyenne. Can't lean on a dead man. You could be figuring it wrong. No. No, you'll lose it, just like me. Tell me when you ever won. Tell me. Never. Well, now's your chance. It can't be more than 20 miles to the territory land from here. Take the horse, go. I'll meet you wherever you say. Try. You're the best thing that's ever come into my life. Oh, God, I don't, I don't want to lose you. You won't. Well, then forget about Luke Clark. Make me more important. Well, Doc, do you think she might be strong enough to be moved by tonight? Hmm? Well, what about it, Doc? Hey, Doc! Doggone it, Doc! Pay attention. This here is serious. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, uh, nighttime would be just right. We could turn around and go back the way we come. Will you stop talking about going back? But there weren't no Indians behind us. Well, that doesn't mean that there aren't no Indians there now. What about Mrs. Valerie, the baby? The good doctor hasn't said that. I've already given you, gentlemen, my professional opinion. And I'm going to make sure it's respected. Well, thank you, sir. Coming from you, I consider that a genuine compliment. Come on. I just wish I could take you with me. Both of us on this horse would neither of us make it. Neither would they if we took one of theirs. You'll be waiting in Santa Fe? A week won't be any longer. Now go on. Please. Rango! Please. you ain't. off that kid while we'd have ourselves another gun up here. Wouldn't hurt nothing, you know. Kids are pretty fair hands. Shut up and drive. Now, that ain't no way to and talk. And if you gotta talk, talk to them horses. Get up there! Charlie! Ah! Driver, can't you go any faster? Here, shh. You're gonna wake the baby. Man waits all of his life for a chance to better himself. And ends up in a trap like this. Do you see any savages, brother? See them? Brother, let me tell you something. By the time you see them, it's too late. Oh, dear. I'm with you, friend. We'd have gone on yesterday the way I wanted to. We'd be safely in Cheyenne by now. 
Edward, you talk too much. You know, Mr. Hatfield, you don't faze me in the least. Despite your clever, clever ways, you're just a tin horn gambler. Mister, if I was you, I'd save some of that fight. You're just liable to need it. When I want the advice of a convict, I'll request it. You're the misfits the marshal sided with, a fine conglomerate. Saloon dregs. Ed, would you address one more word to either one of those ladies? And Please, I'll gentlemen. Through your head. No, wait a minute. Let him do it. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Quiet. Now look what you've done. You want to be ashamed. Ashamed. Uh, now I'm all perspired. Johnson Park's right the other side of this rise, ain't it? Yeah. In Seven Mile Point, Rimrock, and in Cheyenne. Sure, we'd like to give them a little breather when we get up on top. Yeah. Cavalry! Cavalry! I golly, we made it, girly, we made it! You folks can rest easy now. We got the army to escort us in. Well, I guess that proves the old adage it's always darkest. I think I owe everyone an apology. Uh, if you can uh, find it in your hearts to forgive. Uh, I must admit that uh, once or twice back there, I, I was, uh, well, I behaved rather badly. And I I'd like to think that uh, no one holds any hard feelings. Uh, I'm... Well, I've, we, we've all uh, been under a, a terrible strain. Have we? Perhaps you'd like to change places now, Miss Dallas. I think you'd be more comfortable here by the window. Thanks, but it really doesn't matter now. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I must say this has been most interesting. All in all, exciting, really. I certainly will have many thrilling stories to tell Agatha and the children. <laughs> My dear Peabody, you sound as if you enjoyed it. Well, I... Yes, I... I'm afraid I did. Well, old friend, I really think such a fortuitous turn of event calls for a little toddy for the body. Well...
soccer kid. Hey, Hatfield! Man, this is better than a little round top at Gettysburg. I guess that was it. I guess it was. much past midnight wonder where everybody's at what'd you expect the brass band i'll be damned buck you got through got through <laughs> we just shot the hell out of crazy horse and his whole dang war party there must have been 500 of them well 50 anyhow <laughs> what's going on here sure glad to see you marshal <laughs> why the blummers they took over the eldorado been at it two solid days now Drop it. Five minutes, Curly. You owe it to me. I said drop it, kid. I got an important message for you, Marshal. That can wait. Just keep this on him. You folks go on inside. Ringo. Don't. Look, kid. I'm beholden to you. We all are. Then show it. I am too. Oh, but well, let me rotten the pen while you collect the reward. That reward is mine, dead or alive. I'm just aiming to keep you from getting yourself killed. I'm gonna talk to the warden. I'll tell him what you've done. I'll tell him you give yourself up. Now go easy on you, kid. I promise you that. A year from now, you'll be a free man. But as long as some plumbers are alive. I won't be any kind of a man. Marshal. One of them named Gatewood, eh? Yeah, I... That message said he stole a payroll right out of his own bank. $10,000. 
came over the wire first thing as soon as it was fixed. Where's Gatewood? You mean he got away? Got away with what? Well, that little satchel he had was full of stolen money. Now, one of you must have seen where he went. Ask me, sir. I knew it. I knew it all the time, those shifty little ass. Well, Reverend, where'd he go? Where are those red devils? Bring them on! Dr. Desmelson is cured by condition. Well, what is your condition? I don't know, but I've never felt better in my life. He went out the other door of the coach while you were so busy chaining up Ringo. Last time I saw him, was making a beeline for the El Dorado. What are you waiting for, Marshal? Where's your sheriff? Gone fishing. Just like he always does when the plumbers come to town. Makes you the only man in town with a badge on, Marshal. Unless you plan on going fishing, too. You talk too much, mister. Curly, let me go with you. I want you to keep your eye on him. And if anything happens to me, will you put him where he'll be safe until the sheriff gets back? Curly? Curly! saying? Uh, a thousand dollars. Huh? A thousand dollars. The minute we uh, get to Salt Lake. I'll even make it fifteen hundred if we can leave this very minute. Ain't no hurry as far as I can see. What would you see? You stay put, boy. Didn't nobody tell you, Marshal? This here is a private party. I want that man. The fellow with the little bag? He's my guest. We've been breaking bread together. Let's go, Gatewood. Now, look, if he tries to draw, I'll kill him. I told you to stay put, boy. I don't take to your manners, Curly. I'm here to make an arrest. Come busting into a place where you don't even have an invite. Start yelling about killing people. Well, if you want this fella, you got him. But uh, first, you got to go out and turn that Ringo pup loose. Now, don't push me, Luke. You want to kill me, too? If I have to. A God-fearing, peace-loving, law-abiding citizen like me. Well, if you want him, you got him. You did just fine, boy. Oh. He'll be walking on sticks for years. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better come and get Curly. He's had a little accident. Turn me loose! Turn me loose! Get these off me! Turn him loose. And all the time oh. you figure to run off without so much as a buy your leap. I, uh, I told you when I came that I'm in a terrible hurry to get to Denver. Salt Lake. Yes. Must be this violence. I, I don't like violence. I said I didn't want any violence. Now, don't you worry. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to you. You're my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Not partner. A thousand dollars. Fifteen hundred. I said maybe fifteen hundred. Oh. Well, now, Miss Money. It's, uh, in Denver, huh? Yes, in Denver. When we get... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean Salt Lake. 
I, I said Salt Lake first, you, you remember? May, uh, maybe all this blood's got you a little mixed up. You've been changing your story so much, I've kind of lost faith in you. You can trust me, Mr. Plummer. Really, you can. Oh, good. I'll give you some of the money right now. And, and then... <laughs> you know, son, I think this man's been lying to us all No, long. no. I wouldn't lie to you. Th this money belongs to the bank. It doesn't belong to me. You see, Matthew? Truth will out. Amen, mister. Now get the money, Matthew. Plumber! It's Ringo! Come on out! As the good book says, everything comes to him who waits. I said waits. Stand up like a man and choose your own time. Son, bide your time. Uh, oh, yes, Daddy. Doc. Well, ask me. I'm hurting like hell. I'm $500 poorer. Why don't you get in that buckboard over there before that chuckle-headed sheriff gets back here? What are you waiting for? Go on, get the hell out of here, both of you. Play. 
place upon my grave. I'm taking the stagecoach that's leaving for Cheyenne, so darling, please kiss me goodbye. Cause someone is waiting to meet me in Cheyenne, one of us two has to die. One of us two has to die Oh, my darling, if you love me Help me to be brave I gather flowers on the hill To place upon my grave 